to the Montreal SPCA Foster Program. An Amir update. Dear SPCA, I hope you're doing well in these difficult times. I just wanted to send you a message to let you know that Amir is doing fantastic. She has healed well from her surgery and she has put on more weight since her last visit. She's become as playful and energetic as a kitten and is very fun to be around. Although she can be pretty mischievous at Amira. <laughs> Amira isn't the first cat that I fostered. Since 2016, me and my partner Lily have regularly been fostering about one cat per year through our local SPCA. We've had the pleasure of spending time with Boo, Bagheera, Burrito, Simba, and currently this little princess, Amira. Fostering was always something that I thought I would enjoy. It just seemed to be the perfect compromise between wanting an animal, but also knowing that my life wasn't necessarily stable enough to adopt one. I could help out my local shelter and the cat while getting to enjoy the reward of their company. Cats are brought to the shelter for a variety of issues. Some have been seized from their homes that were deemed unsuitable, or others simply have been abandoned there. For that reason, foster cats often require some sort of medical attention and need to be socialized or have some sort of behavioral issues that need to be worked through. Fostering is basically intended to be the bridge that leads to adoption. And as the foster parent, you play a key role in helping the cat recover and find their forever home. This is an incredibly rewarding process. Every time that I've fostered, I've seen cats nurse back to health, emerge from their shell, and thrive in a safe and loving environment. Recently though, I've come to an important realization that I had previously overlooked. Fostering was not only helping these cats along their journey, but they were also helping me along mine. There's a lot you can learn about yourself from caring for others, and a lot of virtues that can be developed through this practice. Specifically, I think there's a few practices that I've developed over the years through fostering that in turn, I've realized have also made me a better artist. The first time Amira broke one of our pots, I felt exasperated, frustrated, and unable to find a real solution to her behavior. I was so hung up on the fact that I couldn't just tell her not to do it again or order her to stop. And between scratching our chair and trying to pee in our plants, the attempt to change our cat's behavior sometimes definitely felt futile. But I think what I came to understand is that cats are essentially little agents of chaos that you've decided willingly to invite into your home but have no real control over. Having a cat made me realize what's within my realm of control and what's outside of it. And I think acknowledging the things I can't change and letting them go taught me how to be patient, how to take time to listen, understand, and adapt. When you're creating something, patience is essential. Patience with yourself to accept when ideas come and go, Patience with the process of putting your idea to paper and patience with feelings of uncertainty and stagnation. Art takes time and it often takes patience to recognize what's within your capacity to change and what should be acknowledged and accepted. In a world where were driven to be as productive as possible and valued on the basis of our output, it's really easy to feel like we either don't have time for play or even worse, that it's frivolous and a total waste of time. Let me assure you, Amir does not feel that way. I'm always astonished by how easily she can turn an inanimate object into a mouse that she's trying to catch or be led by her curiosity to explore every single nook of our closet. 
Now that I'm trying to make a living off art, I easily find myself turning something that was simply done for the pleasure of it into a task or a chore, another item to check off my to-do list. I'm reminded by Mir that when I was a kid, making music with my childhood friends was play. We would do it for hours without an intended goal, just because we enjoyed it. And that's the thing, play doesn't have an end goal. It's not something specific, and it may even be a little absurd or out there, but that's sometimes where you find your next big idea, or that moment that sparks creativity. But maybe it doesn't, and that's okay, because you were just playing. Every cat that goes through the foster program needs to be taken care of. They're sick or underfed, terrified of others, and without a home. Arguably the most rewarding part of the fostering process is knowing that within my care, Amir is no longer emaciated, she's no longer sick, and she's rediscovered the desire to play. Most of this was accomplished simply by providing her a home and environment that gave her the space and support to heal and grow. I feel that nurturing your art in a loving environment is essential to helping it grow. You shouldn't hold it to an impossibly high standard and you shouldn't allow the amazing work of other people to devalue yours. Incredible art is often incredible because it's multifaceted and nuanced. And the more you nurture it and experience it, the more you uncover its many layers. This process takes time and love, but it often yields massive breakthroughs. I personally have had a really bad habit of playing down my work or being super critical and harsh and expecting too much too soon from my creations or thinking that each one needs to amount to something that I deem significant. It's easy to forget that art isn't a product, but a nurturing process in which new ideas are allowed the space to connect and grow. One of the most common questions I get about fostering is, isn't it really hard to let them go? Although it's definitely sad to think that it'll be the last time that I'll have Amir fall asleep in my lap, or feel her purr as I give her a good scratch. Letting her go will be made easier by the fact that I've already come to accept that this is a transient stage in her life. In fact, the whole reason she's with me in the first place is because I knew that someday she was going to leave. The process, although hard, is really valuable to my growth and brings me closer to an understanding that nothing is permanent. This principle can easily be extended to my creations as well. Art isn't fixed in time. It's fluid, fleeting, and ever-evolving. Ideas will often come and go throughout time, existing for only a few brief seconds, or nurtured for months on end. And I try to come to terms with the things that are never made permanent, and appreciate that they once, for a moment, existed. Understanding and accepting that I will inevitably let things go is important because I'll often gain something in the process. As I've shifted my focus from making art purely for the sake of passion to something that I see as a means to support myself, I've seen an unfortunate change in how I treat and value my art. I've begun to put a lot of pressure on myself and will more easily get frustrated when I'm not being productive or seeing results fast enough. I now, more than ever, need to consciously practice basic principles of being patient and listening to myself, giving myself the permission to play and explore and the space to learn, change, and grow. Amira, every day, serves as a reminder that I wouldn't be doing this in the first place if it weren't for the fact that I simply enjoy the process.